Oh, this mask. Got real bad masking. This. I am an idiot. And this is all I need to make sure that my car can boost to the right level. What's going on everybody? Welcome to another video here on the channel where it's time to data log this car. A wise man by the name of James once said, more pal, baby. Ironically, Tuner James also said, turn the boost up, which I think it's safe to say that's him saying, more pal, baby. So the other day I took the car out and data logged it. And once again, I couldn't get it past 22 pounds of boost. I then looked back through the email chain. And at one point, James did mention, don't send me any more logs until you can get this thing to boost to 29 pounds. I looked even further back in the email chain. And at one point, James said, don't touch anything. Your boost levels are just where I need them to be. So I looked back at that particular log and noticed that the car was boosting at 30 and a half pounds at wide open throttle. So I actually started scratching my head. It made absolutely no sense that one time this car boosted at 30 pounds. Then I realized it was all because of a spring. So when we started with this build, we had the lightest possible spring in the tile Q blow off valve. Unfortunately, with lighter springs, the blow-off valve actually opens up in high boost situations. So there was a point where I had the white spring, the plain spring, and the yellow spring to determine which one we needed to put in the car. There was only one time we data logged the car with a yellow spring, and it was the time that we actually hit 30 and a half pounds of boost. The reason why I took it out is because under low boost pressure, I heard a little bit of a flutter and thought the spring was a little too stiff. Ever since then, I've had the plain spring in, which is the step down from the yellow. And ever since then, the car has only boosted up to 22 pounds. So the advantage to ripping the car apart a little bit ago is the fact that we found a few leaks, but it still didn't solve our main problem, getting to 29 pounds of boost. So it's time to put the yellow spring back into the blow off valve, get it back on the car, data log this thing again, and we're not stopping until we hit 29 pounds of boost. So if you've never installed one of these before, it's pretty straightforward if you have the ZZP upper charge pipe that already has the flange welded in place. You need the brown O-ring that just holds it. And then from there, you can go ahead and place the blow off valve. And then you can take the clamp, making sure that you don't lose the screw. Actually, I can take that out. I don't need that. And you clamp it in place. Now it's pretty easy. You could basically hold it together with your fingers. Uh, you can get the other end. Be careful because they can fall out. Not a huge deal, but it does take time if you have to go fishing for it. Luckily the bit that you need, it's a T25. It works for both the screws on the blow off valve, as well as this clamp to hold it in place. So just get the threading in a little bit so it catches. Now that that's done, let's get this thing out, see what it can do. Uh-oh, uh-oh, something went pop. All right, so I am currently limping the car home. Bad news is the upper charge pipe flew out of the coupler to the point that it, the blow off valve almost went through the hood of the car. So I'm limping the car home because I pushed the upper charge pipe back into the coupler for now and basically trying to keep this into little or no boost as possible until I get the car home. Luckily, I'm right around the corner from the house. I get it into the garage so I can fix that and make sure that this doesn't happen again. So the reason why I'm showing you all of this is because most of social media and YouTube, it's like a highlight reel. Everyone posts, oh, look at this, and all the positivity and none of the negativity, but like, come on, we're modifying cars here, and 
we've all been there. We've all dealt with struggles. We've all dealt with that kind of stuff, right? So like this, this just goes to show you that like this stuff happens. It's part of the process. So here I am, almost home, keeping this thing under any boost, keeping it in vacuum and uh, get it home and, and fix it. All right, so able to check everything out and this isn't as bad as I thought it was. Obviously, when I was driving, I was logging the car. I went into panic mode because I was at half throttle, hit about 30 pounds of boost or what I thought was 30 pounds of boost and then heard a giant pop and lost everything. So limped the car home, checked, didn't notice there were any leaks anywhere. So decided, all right, let the car cool off and check it out. So once I was looking around, I noticed that this pipe is super loose and moving around. And it turns out that when I was building boost on that pull, the pipe actually blew out of that silicone coupler down there. So I didn't have the clamp that is down there tight enough. Totally one of my Achilles heels. I never tighten these things enough. I took this out when I was tearing the car apart, putting the new valve cover in, checking for any of those vacuum and coolant leaks from that previous video that you saw. So when I put it back, I just didn't tighten it well enough, obviously. So new rule of thumb for me is to tighten these until you start to see it cause a little bit of a divot in the silicone coupler. And then hopefully that's tight enough and it won't blow off. If I take a look at the hood, let's look up here. You can see it a little bit. You can see a scratch mark here. And this is how I noticed the pipe was what caused that giant pop because I never had this scratch here nor you could see a little bit of like an indent here too. I didn't have any of them. And you could see this hood is actually in pretty good shape if I move back and get the camera to focus. For a car that's 2010, it's actually in really good shape. So when I took a look at the top here, I then noticed this very interesting, there we go. There it is. So I noticed this. Now, the only reason why I knew that that was something new is because I recently took the car to get all of the dents pulled out of my passenger fender over here and they noticed a couple more on the hood and they said, hey, we're gonna pull everything out of your hood as well while it's here. And I didn't have any issues with it. The only dent that I had was one that came with the car when I purchased it back near the lip over there. Previous owner, when I met him for the first time, told me that that was a little accident that they had. Uh, the dent shop told me that was something that couldn't be fixed. It's, it's kind of boogered up and everything with maybe touch up paint. Now, when you look over here, you can really see, yeah, look at that. This is the first time I am not mad about that because if you have been following me here on this channel, you are well aware of the power issue that I've been experiencing with this car. Have not been able to get it to boost past 22 pounds to save my life, no matter what I did to it. There's a lot of issues here, right? This was the first time that I drove this car and as soon as I put my foot on that gas pedal, it started building up boost and would want it to go. It didn't feel like there was any hesitation at all. And that's what made me feel so good about this. So really simple fix, but to make it a whole lot easier, I'm just gonna take the bumper off. So then that way I can take this protective cover off right here and reattach the upper charge pipe into that silicone coupler, wrench down on it and just keep going and going and going, making sure that that's held on nice and tight. Um, but I'm going to have to figure out something and figure out a way to secure this because if it does happen again, I just don't want this to keep hitting the same spot on the hood of the car. I'm not going to say that the blow off valve could go through, but you know, I also don't want to risk that. I also know it was the blow off valve because if you look right up here, let's get this to focus a little bit better. There's actually a little bit of a nick right here. My nail gets caught in that wasn't there before. So there you have it, put that back. This car is finally boosting at 30 pounds of boost like it was always supposed to. Looks like we're on the right path. All right, so it's been about a month and a half since the last part of the video was recorded. Finally got all of this taken care of and figured out. So first things first, obviously this charge pipe came out of the coupler down here. So re-secured that and tightened it down. If you're ever using these style clamps, you think they're tight enough, just tighten them more. Because case in point, 
You might have a charge pipe come out of the coupler and blow into your hood. This is all fixed, it's all set to go. Another thing that I ended up doing was I was able to put the charge pipe in a position where I was able to bolt it down to the block itself. So if you are familiar with this Ecotech platform and the ZZP charge pipes, you then know this was put in the place because there is a bolt for the high pressure fuel pump that you're supposed to mount it to. Since I am not running a stock high pressure fuel pump, I'm running an LT1 fuel pump that came off of a Corvette on this car. I had to figure it out and be a little creative. And by creative, it was just figure out a way to shift this so I can get it to bolt here instead of up here. Everything is good. Luckily, when we put the S257 on, Mark actually cut this coupler to make it a little bit shorter than how it was from ZZP. And that actually worked to my advantage with this and being able to move this charge pipe because now everything is able to connect. So what I just have to do is keep an eye and make sure that this silicone coupler isn't rubbing up against my wastegate. If it is, then I'm gonna have to maybe put like a heat shield on it or anything like that. But I'm just concerned that maybe if it gets too hot, it might melt. Who knows, maybe with the silicone coupler, it can handle a little bit of heat, but we'll find out. Now that all of this is back together, another thing I wanna show you, that pimple that was on the hood actually got that taken care of thanks to Garrett over at Charisma Auto Care in Westchester, PA. So you're gonna see a little bit of an imperfection right here. That blow off valve hit the hood of the car so hard, it caused that pimple and actually cracked the paint. So he was able to get the dent out. So if I actually go from different angles here, you can see that's smooth, it's gone which is exactly what I wanted. I was aware that this could happen because it hit so hard it cracked the paint. And the only thing that you can do is put touch up paint. Now, obviously when you do touch up paint, the easiest thing is to build it up and make it higher than the surface. And then you can take a really fine sanding block and wet sand it, smooth it out, and then polish. And then that can get rid of some of those imperfections. The other thing is this car is a 2010. It was an everyday driver. You may have seen my detailing video, but there are some rock chips up front just from it being a daily driver and being driven. So there could come a time where I actually go and get the hood painted, but you know what, for original paint, and again, the 10 foot rule, you stand back, can't really see it. Now, you may have been able to tell if you've been looking around outside of the frame on the edges and stuff, this is not the garage the car is usually in. That's because the car is finally in its new home, which is the exact reason why I haven't been updating or videotaping any of this because I've been a little busy. We'll get to that in a little bit, however. So for now, have an updated tune from James. Got to load it into the car. Once again, we got to road test this thing and make sure that we can get to at least 29 pounds of boost. Ideally, 30. So moment of truth, let's get this thing back out on the road. 